My name's John St. John, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about our Hog Island drift boats. We rotor mold our Hog Island 16 foot drift boat. We call it the LTD 16. We rotor mold it and get a cross section of our boat that looks like this. Folks ask us all the time what our boats look like. That's an actual cross section. This one's been improved a bit. We shot it a couple of times with different guns. Have a, a video on YouTube if you uh, look up Hog Island boats, I guess. But anyway, a little bit about rotor molding. In our rotor molding, and since we use a two part mold, the parting line on our mold is right along this edge. One half of the mold comes down, makes the inside part of the boat. The other half of the mold comes up and makes everything you see on the outside. The two halves of the mold are bolted together and then rotated in an oven to distribute powder that forms this material and this material. We call this skin foam skin or seamless smooth butter. And it's what makes our boat so special. Very, very tough, very, very quiet. They float with holes in them, float upside down, act right on the water. Last year in 2006, we sent one of our uh, boats to the U.S. Coast Guard testing facility in Solomon's Island, Maryland, and they drilled 11 holes in our boat hull and sunk her for 18 hours with 5,600 pounds and we popped back up. We are the uh, world's only drift boat manufacturer that's rated for flotation by the U.S. Coast Guard. This material we call seamless smooth butter. Uh, the, uh, the rotor molding industry calls it uh, skin foam skin. It's two types of linear polyethylene. It's virtually unsinkable. In very many pieces it floats. It floats upside down, floats with holes in it. Uh, a, real neat, a real neat boat in that way. The first thing we're going to talk about is the front of our boat. Uh, what I'm looking at right now I have my hands on is our Superfly deck. It's a, a rotor molded part that we bolt into a mounting shelf that's molded into our boat. So it's a metal to metal connection for removal in the event you ever wanted to remove your fly deck. A couple of neat features we put on it. A big foam pad here that's a great place to catch flies, humpies, stimulators, hoppers. Nice little uh, fish here that are made out of foam too that are great for little blue wing olives and little flies. A uh, molded in tray here catches your hemostats and nippers and zingers. And of course a molded in cup, over, cup holder over there. Gotta like the cup holder. And now what we're going to talk about is our uh, casting braces. This is our front casting brace for the Seat of Champions. And uh, it's a really neat little uh, uh, system we have here. It's a metal to metal system where your leg horns are, are removable uh, with a set screw and an Allen wrench. They're also adjustable for the angle of your leg horn if you want to change the angle. And also your whole casting brace is removable. There's a uh, set screw here. So if you're ever uh, on a multi-day trip or some other type of pursuit in your boat and you want to remove your casting braces, be it the front casting brace or the rear casting brace, with this Allen wrench you can take the whole thing in and put it back. And also our casting braces are padded. There's a lot of casting braces made out of uh, be it fiberglass or aluminum or wood that are a little bit hard we think. And This is a soft cushion padded casting brace that is comfortable day in and day out. The cover is washable and replaceable if you ever like a different colored cover. Or, uh, or a brand new cover in the same uh, color. That's uh, for sure attainable. We have a, a zipper here that's kept in a little zipper garage. One of our objectives at Hog Island, and this is really uh, uh, a strong, deep uh, rooted philosophy at Hog Island, is everything's gonna be seamless. And we tuck this little zipper into its own little zipper garage here. Nice little place so there's nothing to hang up at all with fly lines when you're fighting uh, uh, a fish that you've been looking for for a long time, right? Uh, to be sure, a lot of very, very unique uh, manufacturing processes with our Hog Island drift boat. And probably none of them are more unique than our seat system and the way that we use a molded in insert to anchor our pedestal seat and our rower seats. Uh, what I'm holding here is our insert plate. And it's perforated here uh, so the foam and the plastic will flow through it. What we do is we anchor this insert plate in the mold and while we're molding our boat hull, it is molded in place. And these are receiver nuts for a sandwich plate that anchors our seat pedestal and our rower seat. Uh, these are super, super comfortable and seamless seats. Easy to remove. They lock with a uh, they lock with a positive lock, so you can adjust your swivel. And then it also has a patented uh, no pitch hinge here in the back. Just a nice little system that's really comfortable all day. That here is our front entry double barrel rod storage. It's an eight foot polycarbonate tube. Uh, some folks have been modifying our tubes uh, to get different rods in. I personally like this eight foot tube. I have a 90 pound lab that she can bounce in and out of the boat. Uh, eight foot tube definitely protects a whole lot of the rod. Front entry double barrel on the right side while I'm looking at a uh, rear entry single barrel rod storage. But just for sure a nice uh, way to be able to store your rods, see your rod going in and out. Uh, a whole lot of protection is what this is all about.
what we're looking at now is our uh, rower seat on a seat slide. Uh, typically, traditionally, everyone right now in the drift boat industry is mounting a bench that you have to slide the whole bench. Our rower seat's on its own little track and uh, there's a lock on this side where you can lock it down exactly where you want to be. A comfortable position is to have it all the way back for sure leaning into the rear casting brace or in a more aggressive position way forward where you're right up over the uh, foot brace there in the cockpit. But uh, a neat little feature, it's a metal to metal connection. We use our same insert system that we use for our pedestal seats to go into the rower seat. So you have a, a real firm anchor for your rower seat and a way to lock it into a position very quickly and very easily. This is a, a, a unique to Hog Island as, as many things are in our drift boat. We manufacture our own hatches and uh, put a nice little relief of our logo in there. For sure, watch your step, but it's a comfortable hatch that you can step on as much as you like. Uh, we have two buckles in the back that act like hinges, one buckle in the front, and you pop her up and there's everything you like for the day as far as uh, cold drinks and ice or little raincoats and uh, fishing bags, things of that nature. Uh, there's one here, of course, and then one on the right side of the rower seat. We call these our rowers bench storage hatches. And just a, a good, clean, easy system that's really seamless. If anybody has to chase a fish from the front of the boat to the rear of the boat or from the uh, rear of the boat to the front of the boat, you'll be able to get over and out without being hung up or, or uh, for sure not too slippery. This is a real unique sticker to Hog Island. Uh, no other drift boat manufacturer in the world has this one that, that uh, has uh, certification by the U.S. Coast Guard for flotation. Of course, every other uh, drift boat and drift boat manufacturer uh, makes a boat that, that sinks if it's turned over or has a hole in it. What we do here uh, on, on a whole lot of rivers, uh, you're going to be required to carry a spare oar. Uh, we think our philosophy, it's always great to have a spare oar. The spare oar blade is locked here on the front of the rower's bench, and then the spare oar shafts are locked on the rear of the rower's bench. It's a quick little Velcro system. It comes off when you need it uh, real quick and real easy. The boats come with our uh, hydraulic water launcher, AKA squirt gun. Uh, we like to use them to take water out of the uh, trays here or out of the cup holder, or for sure at the end of the day, a neat little way to uh, take a bag of ice out of the hatch. And uh, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and. Uh, They'll ride all day long in this boat just to be able to play pirates and shoot someone with some water. Our very first objectives at Hog Island was to design a drift boat that had many, many points of difference. And one of our uh, very, very strong points of difference is the rear of our boat. Uh, in many drift boats, this seat is mounted up on the transom, the rear seat, or the rear seat's mounted on a box that goes from sidewall to sidewall. And this area in the rear becomes the penalty box. In our boat, we uh, for sure uh, built a very, very, very flat deck that has a lot of room. Uh, this is my favorite place to fish because the guy up front doesn't know where I'm fishing. But uh, the person in the rear has a full 360 degree swiveling seat, a big flat surface that's reminiscent of a flats boat, and a, uh, a nice casting brace that's padded. And, and just like the uh, front casting brace, all the leg horns are adjustable and removable. The whole casting brace is removable to set the boat up for multi-day trips. And uh, just a real neat little uh, area to hang out for a day. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the transom of our LTD-16 drift boat. Uh, anchor arm and motor mount. Now the motor mount's uh, been a real surprise to us. In the last year, uh, probably 90% of the boats that we're uh, shipping of our 16-foot drift boat is going out with this motor mount. Uh, we feel to be sure that this is the uh, best motor mount in the drift boat industry. It's a, a real secure place to hang a, a 10 horse or less gas motor and a real neat spot to hang an electric motor. And uh, Drift boats uh, don't have a keel on them, but they sure can be enjoyable on, uh, you know, small ponds and lakes where you're not trying to go miles and miles and miles. A uh, real stable platform for, for running a motor and en enjoying some flat water fishing or motoring back up uh, some rivers. We're here in the rivers that these are being used in now in Wisconsin with motors and, and in Idaho and uh, in Montana a little bit and for sure on the, uh, in the northwest on the coastal rivers and in the, in the bigger Columbia rivers. Uh, but one interesting aspect of our boat, folks ask us if we if we get a motor mount and then we're going to put an uh, offset anchor arm, will that affect the performance of the anchor in the boat? And the answer is uh, no. Even with our anchor arm offset and the boat at anchor, the boat will hang straight down and, and won't swing. And that's a little bit about the shape of our, our boat hull. Uh, like, the, like the rear of the boat where there's a lot of room for the fishermen, uh, the, the back end of our boat remained uh, fatter longer, if you would. We didn't taper it so fast. We let it stay bigger longer. And that gives our boat a, a real, real stable feeling side to side and tip to tail. It enables us to do things like this and offset anchor arm and still have a boat that, that hangs straight. I know that sounds a little preachy, but uh, 
it's getting close for me to be going to the river and uh, thanks for spending a little time with us on Hog Island TV.